not a perfect person. The woman of God, the mother of God, is not someone who always makes the best choices, who always makes the best decisions. I want you to see the woman of God is not someone whose children are always on the top and they never have trouble. We will see in these three women that sometimes their children make bad choices. We'll see in these women that sometimes they make bad choices. We'll see in these women that sometimes life can fight against everything that you're teaching your children and teach them something completely different. We'll find in these women that sometimes they get tired. Sometimes they get frustrated and sometimes they just need a 10 minute break. Can anybody identify with that? But there are three powerful traits in each of these ladies, in each of these women, in each of these mothers, that if we would take time to dare appear upon, that if we would take time to look upon, I think we could all be encouraged. The first woman I want you to look at is a woman by the name of Eve. And we're going to look at Genesis chapter 4 as you're turning that. Now, I love the biblical language. I love Hebrew. I love Greek. I love getting into what the text actually means. I'm going to Genesis chapter 4. We're going to look at verses 1 through 5, somewhere in there. And we're going to talk about this most special woman that we call Eve. Now, Eve is the name Chava in the Hebrew. Now, the name Chava in the Hebrew is derived from two root names. One is Shay, C-H-A-Y, which means living. As you're going to Genesis chapter 4, we're going to look at verses 1 through 4, 1 through 5, somewhere in that vicinity. So we're talking about this name Eve. What does it mean? And it also has a loose derivative of a name Shay, which is C-H-A-I, and it means life. Now, when we look at the name Eve, it is the causative effect of those two root names that I just mentioned. And so if one of the root names mean life and the other one means living, so when we look at the name Eve and the causative effect of things, we find that the name Eve really means that she is giving life to all in the future. And so this is the woman that we're meeting. And when we see her name, her name is too heavy for us to identify with. When we see her, who she is in God's eyes, and we look at how she has behaved in the natural, sometimes these two things do not add up. But her name is still Eve. Her name is still, and her purpose is still the purpose of the one through which all future life will flow from. I'm saying this to say, I don't know what your reality looks like. I don't know what you see when you look in the mirror, but I want you to know that God calls you Eve. I want you to know that God has a name for you that supersedes and overpowers whatever your earthly reality might be. God called the woman Eve. Powerful thing, powerful name. A woman through which all life is to flow. Now, Eve didn't go to seminary. Eve wasn't a, a language specialist, but at the time when God planted Adam and God planted Eve in their purality, I'm in Genesis chapter 4, we're going to look for very briefly, we're going to look at verses 1 through 4, 1 through 5, somewhere in that vicinity, so we can get a totality and a fuller understanding of who this woman is. But I want you to see this dichotomy. I want you to see this paradox. I want you to see who she is in the natural and who she is in the spirit. I want you to see who she is in the eyes of creation, but I want you to also see who she is in the eyes of the creator. Hey, I want you to know you're somebody in the eyes of God. I want you to know that the woman of God is at the highest pedestal in God's mind. I want you to know the woman of God is someone in the kingdom, is someone special in the kingdom, and her name was, was Eve. And all life was to flow from this woman's being. And I think she understood that in some 
inspirational way. I think she understood the pressure of being the one through which others will flow from, the one from which others would nurse from. If you're in this room today, we flow from a woman called, called Eve. So let's look back at Genesis chapter 4, and I want you to see some things about the life of this particular woman. I'm in Genesis chapter 4. I'm going to look at verses 1 through 4 very briefly. It says, Now Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain saying, I've gotten a man with the help of God. You know, you can do some amazing things with the help of God. We can do some extraordinary things with the help of God. When you have God in your life, you can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or imagine. And again, she bore his brother Abel. Now, Abel was a keeper of sheep and Cain, a worker of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. Now I want you to see here, you see this name Cain, you see the name Abel, you see what Cain did, you see what Abel did, but we're really still talking about Eve. We're talking about that which flowed from the being, from the loins of, of Eve. And Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions, and the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering. But for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So Cain was angry. We're still talking about Eve. And his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, who is Cain? Eve's son. Why are you angry and why has your face fallen? If you do well, you will not be accepted. Will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. It's desire for you, but you must rule over it. Now, we're talking about Eve's son. One thing I want you to see about Eve, and I'm not making an excuse for the poor choices, but I want you to see that she had no mother. I want you to see a woman who was placed in the earth with no mother. No one in the physical sense to nurture her like she has to nurture all to follow. I want you to see a woman in the world seemingly all alone. Yes, she was sent to Adam to be Adam's helpmate, but if you're married and you're a woman, you understand sometimes the husband just can't identify. Sometimes the husband just does not understand Sometimes the husband simply can't relate. And for whatever reason, there are some private moments you choose not to discuss with him. So we see a woman that's all alone. I want to challenge you today to see those Eves that are all alone. I want to challenge you today to see those mothers that are all alone. Those mothers who have never been taught to mother. The, those mothers who have not been nursed by their own mama, those young ladies who's never been taught how to be a woman. You got to teach a little girl how to be a woman when she's a little girl. Sometimes I talk about, talk with my daughter when she gets ready to go to school. I say, come here, let me see you. Let me see what you got on. And I look. And I teach her the standard of God. I let her hear from her father what I think was good, was not so good. I want to make sure that she's fathered and that she's mothered. But I want you to see in City of Faith Church is that church. I want you to see those individuals that God is pressing this way that have never been mothered. I want you to see those individuals that have a great assignment on their lives that have never been mothered by a spiritual mother. I want you to see those young ladies who have never seen a woman of God role model stand up and bear the standard in their lives. I want you to see them pressing this way. God is preparing this house. God is preparing all of those that are serving right now. Right now, we could call this teacher's meeting. Right now, we could call this the leadership summit. Right, right now, we can call this a time to develop the core group. 
don't think it's a coincidence that in this atmosphere, God has all of those who are bearing the foundation of leading and carrying worship for City of Faith Church Fall. 